episode one of the Thinking Differently series brought to you by Keys to the Shop and Boga Coffee. Today we're talking with Ron Dusan of Teofilo Coffee Company. Well, hey everybody, and welcome to the first episode in a series of three episodes on thinking differently in the coffee entrepreneur space. So we're going to be talking with three different coffee shop owners who are taking a slightly different route in the way that they have started or run their businesses. And of course, as we've seen over the past year, thinking differently is such an important asset when it comes to entrepreneurship, especially in the coffee space. Now, this series is brought to you by the Ground Control Cyclops Brewer, and that's coming from Voga Coffee. And this brewer exists because the folks at Voga Coffee decided to think differently about how coffee was brewed. And what ended up happening was that they were able to create technology that allowed coffee to shine even more than we thought that it could. The technology and the equipment allows you to have control over a huge range of flavors. The machine also affords you a lot of versatility. It's not just an amazing batch brewer, but it can also help you in creating batched iced lattes and cold brew, tea and hot chocolate, nitro cold brew, and being able to move with your business is a key component of any valuable piece of equipment in your shop. So if you are wanting to think differently about how you brew coffee and create beverages in your shop, then I highly recommend that you look into getting ground control in your store. You can go to their website over at vogacoffee.com to find out more information. And over on that website, you'll also find the bonus episodes That's right, there is extra material not included in this interview. We had some more conversations with each of our guests, and that is some really great advice and content that each of these guests have to share. And that is available only on the Ground Control website over at groundcontrol.coffee slash keys. Now, today we're going to be talking with Ron Tisan, who is the founder and the coffee engineer officer over at Teofilo Coffee Company. It's a coffee shop that started without a brick and mortar as a farmer's market stand, roasting and serving coffee exclusively from the Philippines. Ron has been in the automotive industry for over 20 years, and as he has turned his attention towards coffee, has brought along with him his penchant for doing things that are difficult and doing things differently in order to make a difference. And in this case, Ron is all about giving back to the Filipino people He himself having been steeped in Filipino culture, having been born there and then raised in the U.S. in a Filipino family. His deep connection to his roots and his penchant for pushing himself to do hard things and to do things that are maybe outside of his wheelhouse but are able to create opportunities for others in the process is what makes Teofilo Coffee Company what it is today, an operation now for four years with a brick-and-mortar store, Um, Ron does not show any signs of slowing down, and he has a lot of great things to share in this episode about how he thinks about business, what his goals are, what he's learned in the process, and where he's going with Teofilo Coffee. So I hope you enjoy this first episode in the series on Thinking Differently, brought to you by Ground Control and Keys to the Shop. Let's get right to our interview with Ron Tisan of Teofilo Coffee Company. Okay, Ron, welcome to Keys to the Shop. So pleased to have this conversation with you. How are you doing today? Great. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, absolutely. This is um, going to be, I think, a great conversation because you're doing some really interesting things out there. Um, and this is something, uh, how long have you been working on this project right now? Help me out there. Uh, about four years now. Okay. And th- so you have you always been into coffee? What, what? Let's start out by just talking about how you got into specialty coffee um, from where you were and in really what's propelled you to try to do this for the last four years to establish this company the way you have? For sure. I think uh, the journey, as as many others before me, had started with uh, probably like coffee brewing systems, right? And I think one of them that really stuck out the most to me was AeroPress. And uh, it, it was one of those things that just made coffee good. And it required specific recipes in order to try to make the coffee delicious right so i think it was that what had started me on this journey and I, about like 10 years ago right when i got the aeropress yeah so you got into coffee just by being an enthusiast and then from there i mean most people just stop there right so you kind of took it a step further and I, i'm wondering what's behind that like how 
how did you make the decision that you just didn't want to brew great AeroPress coffee at home, but you you wanted to do it for other people too? Of course, uh, and I think yeah, the the main mission for the company is you know obviously giving back to the Philippines, and uh, how that all started in 2017 was just a conversation that my mom we we're just you know just talking and she mentioned something about coffees from the Philippines. And I don't know, for some reason, I started chasing that. And I don't know, it, it was something that that tied tied me back to my country. And I was like, you know, what? I, I got to see if this is even a thing. So I, I started a, a whole year of just like studying just coffee in general. And then like the idea of the Filipino coffee thing. And then it just opened up more, just like peeling that onion more and more. You're just like, oh man, like I, I don't know w- what I'm getting into, but it's kind of <laughs> interesting. So it's like, it's that like kind of the fun part in it, you know. I'm like, I found something new again, and I was like, oh man, like yeah, I gotta do this. So yeah, what I mean, what had you been doing previous to this? Uh, I mean, I still am. <laughs> I still am in, currently in the automotive industry. I've been in the automotive industry for 25 or 20 plus years now. And uh, I think it's, it's that, you know, my passion, uh, just cars and um, just, you know, dissecting stuff and knowing, you know, I, that I, I, I could have an opportunity to give back to the Philippines, like, you know, keeping that goal in mind, because that's always been a goal for me. I believe the the people before us historically, you know, they they have you know put us here to to try to you know find some way to create some awareness, and I, I am trying to do that is try to create that awareness, not even just for the coffee, but just the culture and and, and Filipinos. So, what so. is it that um, you discovered? I think both for coffee as an industry and specifically about Filipino coffee, because when you typically bring up Filipino coffee to somebody, they're not going to have very much knowledge about it. And so as you studied it and you researched it and get you got into the industry, what are some of the big takeaways that inspired you and also just made you realize that this needs to become a thing and, and this needs to be what I do? Uh, I would say uh, for me, I always choose for some reason, like difficult things. Right. And uh, (laughs) when you, when you do that, you've, you feel it's like um, the examples that I use of like, um, I wanted for the longest time, my dream car, like I, an Acura NSX, right. I finally got one and uh, I, I got it and I was like, Oh, like, I, I, I already reached it. So what, what, there's no like balloons and parties after you, you get that Mm. goal. So this one seems so far, like so unobtainable that I'm like starving for it. And, uh, yeah, the the things that I've, that I've learned (laughs) is that it's not that easy to get it here. Right. It's that there is no like actual trade going from the Philippines to us. I mean, slowly, uh, there, there are a few companies, but, and, and a lot of people don't know of, about what we have available in the Philippines. Um, and if anyone doesn't know, uh, Philippines has 7,000 islands. So if people don't think that we cannot grow coffee there, um, I don't know. That's like saying that we didn't send a rocket to the moon. Yeah, we have Arabica as far as the availabilities, a lot of Arabica, Robusta. Uh, Excelsa and Liberica and Liberica has kind of been that uh, unicorn for me that I've been chasing because it's a, a different species bean uh, how it's roasted and how it tastes is very unique and I, I don't think anyone in the U.S. has kind of um, tasted it yet mm. and, uh, and, and everyone keeps on talking about geishas not not to bash on that right but it's not that rare anymore if I can go to your local place and get and get geishas, but to get coffees from the Philippines roasted locally, I mean that's that's kind of why I'm chasing it. Is because it's I, to me it's still rare. I mean I still have to give this uh, explanation on you know what's what's the difference between Filipino coffee and the other ones. I'm like 
Well, you could ask the same question about the other coffee countries, right? So when you started the business, you opened a, a small space. Probably, is it the same space that you have now? That's the funny thing is, is I didn't start in the brick and mortar. I mean, I started doing farmer's markets first and it was, you know, just setting up at the farmer's market. And then, yeah, any opportunities that came up, I just said, let's go. We just got our brick and mortar uh, last year, December, end of December. Okay. And then uh, we opened up in March. So it's a uh, perfect timing. Now, are you sourcing 100% Filipino coffee? Uh, yes. And uh, as of recently, the, the biggest things that uh, we were able to, to make happen late last year was the communication between the Philippine Coffee Board and the Philippine Embassy. So they've been really instrumental in helping me uh, and, and kind of directing people towards me if they want green bean coffee from the Philippines. Um, they send them all the inquiries through me so that uh, I can hold some of these green bean coffees for other local coffee roasters or people that are interested in it. I, I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, like Bodhi Leaf. I have, yes. Kind of like their same concept, right? Where they have a cafe, they have a roastery, and they have the green bean um, warehouse. Like I'm kind of trying to model some of those, and uh, even in some of the uh, other, you know, coffee companies that came before, like uh, Blue Bottle, a lot of their aesthetics, like super clean and simple. Fills. I mean, they all started, you know, small. So you're striving to be a green bean warehouse or a uh, importer. A Filipino coffee, and a, you're going to be able to sell that green coffee to other people as well uh, as yourself. You use it in your own flagship store, and then that channel that is going to be opened up really does help uh, the Filipino coffee community in the Philippines because now there's a more established channel. So it seems like you're you're making good progress on your intent to really give back by providing this this channel. I didn't see it happening this way. Like I know I had it in 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 my phases of the company, right? Um, I just didn't know that it was going to end up like this. Like you know, it was just a thought in my head. It was just a you know an idea on a napkin at one point, you know. And it just took a lot of patience and and hard work and just you know poking at the bear, I guess, you know. Right. Well, I mean, from a coffee enthusiast to uh, helping establish. Uh, more trade between the Philippines and the U S uh, is quite a jump. Um, there's a, a lot has been accomplished just by, uh, being tenacious towards your goal. So bravo to you. Um, I, I mean, as you establish yourself as a company that you, you mentioned starting out as a farmer's market, building a brick and mortar after that, uh, being largely mobile, I mean, how did your coffee quality evolve? Because representing the quality of the coffee through roasting and brewing is how people are really going to get hooked on it. So I wonder if you could describe to me how your professional development has progressed over these years as a, as a roaster and brewer. I think I want to start off by, by saying, <laughs> like, obviously the farmer's market and, and starting the company, I'm always looking for cost saving thing. And I don't know if it's just a Filipino thing, but uh, I made a like a pour over kind of stand that had like four um, cones on it that I could brew two liter, you know, two liter uh, air pots, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, to try to save on cost. And for a while, I, I had that system going, right? It's where you know, obviously the, the water temperature and obviously the quality in the water, we've always used reverse osmosis water and yeah, roasting at the, at the farmer's market as well. You know, I think I needed to go through these things to kind of find out, you know, what, what is more important, how, how it could be more efficient. Cause imagine just manually pouring over like a two liter. Right. <laughs> and it just, it took, I would have to set up the farmer's market tent, you know, probably like at five or six in the morning, you know, that's prior to loading, unloading, setting up and all that other stuff. Yeah, yeah. So there, there are some inefficiencies there, right? 
then I graduated, right? And then I graduated to a mocha master. I was like, whoa, you know, like that definitely helped out. Obviously still kept some of those uh, details from the beginning, the water quality, always reverse osmosis. And obviously the grinder, uh, uh, that, that process is always the same. And it's always about the consistency of things with me. And then obviously from the mocha master, graduating to the ground control, right? Where I don't have to worry about uh, so much uh, the detail. I can just kind of hit buttons and uh, it does everything for me, the automation of it. And, and as far as the quality goes, same thing, the reverse osmosis water is still and the grinder is still the same. It's just now the machine is the biggest upgrade to why I think we are different than most coffee companies. And I don't want to call ourselves a coffee company. We're just a company that that wants to help people or help things move along. That's including businesses as well. So you, even at, at even at our shop, we invite others uh, in for pop ups. And yeah, even I, I talk to coffee business owners. I'm like, hey, man, let, let's you know try to convince them to to invest, you know, into Filipino coffee as I did. And the, the problem is like, everybody's going to think that it's biased coming from me because I'm Filipino, but I just want people to try it, you know, like what I think is delicious, <laughs> you know, I, I just want people to enjoy it. Well, it's great that you've had a steady progression in your technology. It's quite a jump from doing pour overs and two liters <laughs> to the ground control. Uh, and people make opinions about coffee based on the quality of the coffee they drink. And you, you and I know, like, as as consumers of coffee, especially, you know, before getting into coffee, I think I, I could easily see myself making an opinion about, I don't know, Papua New Guinea or Guatemala or whatever, if I went to a coffee shop and I had a really bad cup of that. And I would just make a rule for myself, like, no, no, I'm not going to get a Guatemala anymore because I had one once and it was bad. Um, yeah. And I, I, cause I don't know, I'm a consumer. I don't know that there's all these variations. So like being able to constantly iterate and make it just better and better. So, so important. And then I imagine the same is true in, in roasting. Yeah, no, for sure. And uh, from the beginning, obviously like I'm data driven, right? Not only by like actual like number data, but even like verbal data, um, that's kind of what the belief was um, in when I first started making the coffee. I just wanted to just serve black coffee. And uh, I was able to not convince, I don't know if that's a perfect word, but to to change people's mind about black coffee. Like I, I literally care about people and I don't want you putting, you know, sugar and creamer in it and i i think a lot of roasters are um are the same way or even like chefs right if you were to make something and you were to for example a, a like a beautiful steak right and you were to put some ketchup on it that's like the same thing when you put creamer in in my coffee that i made for you you know what i mean it's like that <laughs> that emotion like oh man that hurts a little bit you know and we're we're truly honest with the people that that we've been serving. And you're like, yo, if it sucks, like please let us know. And I think they're just so shocked by by us saying that. They're just like, oh, like whoa. And I've never got anyone to tell me to my face at least that that it sucked, you know. And and people still continue to come back. So I know that we're doing something right, um, and we're doing something for for the good. Of, of the people that deserve it. Like, I, I honestly think I'm doing the easy work right now. This is not hard for me to, to be able to survive in, 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 you know, the pandemic or whatever. But I think the people in the Philippines deserve it. You know, they deserve it way more than I do. I'm just doing that little bit for them to see that you can, you know, you can come from where I was born and I was born there and you could do what I am doing right now. Yeah, and as far as the roasting goes, that's all been a process for me. Like, it's the same thing where I told you about the two liter pour over coffee thing, right? I started with a cast iron and uh, that coffee was not delicious. But you did get to see like, you know, the basics of it. And you know, you have to like kind of continually move it 
and there's really no way to control that temperature. So then I went from a cast iron to a, a be more and it, to, to fill the bags that I was trying to, to make, it would take me at least like after my, my day job, another eight hours because to, to fill a, a 12 ounce bag, it was at least four hours to, to fill that bag. Wow. And obviously, and obviously the consistency of the, you know, the, the be more, the electricity, all that stuff, it, you'd have to, br- you'd have to individually r- roast, you know, like it took four, four, um, I want to say 500 gram sets to, to create a 12 ounce uh, bag. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it would just be different every single time. And then I was like, you know, I'm going to research on getting a drum roaster. So yeah, I started researching like drum roasters. During the research, I started going down another rabbit hole, right? I started looking at fluid bed style coffee roasters and Michael Michael Savet's like style uh, roasting. I was like, wait a second. That's something different. The the thing that I chose, right? I chose something different, uh, Filipino coffee, right? So I pick things that are not the chosen path, right? Like, so I ended up getting a fluid bed style coffee roaster. One to serve the purpose so I could take it to the farmer's market. So I bought a generator and I put this thing on a cart and uh, that's what I was doing. I was roasting at the farmer's market. So then people could actually see what I was advertising was real um, because I put freshly roasted Philippines coffee and everyone's like, what is that? Like, oh, everyone would crowd around the machine. Yeah. And obviously I, I monitored all that temperature data. Like I said, it's it's that that data that I'm looking for. And the, the other data of it is the consumers telling me that the coffee's too strong or too weak. I dial stuff you know, based off of their feedback. We're at batch uh, 867 or so. So we we know a little bit about roasting. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Uh, a lot more than you used to with the cast oh, iron. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I'm still learning, man. Like, uh, And that that's why we do stuff differently uh, here at the shop. Like we don't, we don't follow a lot of things like book wise, right? I'm just, I, I'm just doing things to do it and just finding out like experimenting, right? I haven't got any negative feedback, I would say on, on the coffee yet, uh, unless someone is, hasn't told me yet. But uh, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty honest with people, Chris, like, I, I'm <laughs> like, yo, I, I don't have time for that, man. If, if, it's, if it sucks, man, you gotta let me know. So then I could go back and, and find out why it sucks. Right. Well, it's good. Always requesting feedback is a good thing for sure. Yeah. Um, and doing things differently, obviously, will help people remember you, which, as you know, is is really important because there's a lot of brewers and roasters and, you know, today more than ever, yeah. it's a crowded marketplace. And so you've got all these different, um, this variety, these points of differentiation so as you're established um, or becoming more established as a business, where do you want to eventually land? Or do you even think about that in terms of your business? Is it just a day-to-day thing that you're trying to accomplish what's in front of you? Or do you have a bigger vision that you're you're working towards or bigger goal? Yeah, um, like I said, um, the, I had phases that I've planned in my head for the longest time. The green bean warehouse idea has been one of the phases. It's, I'm still in the first phase, right? The, the second phase was actually to buy land in the Philippines and to start growing some of these beans that I'm talking about in, in the Philippines. So that's the second phase. The third phase is actually growing it here in the States so that I can create a, a uh, kind of a, a door for my people so that they can see what I saw growing up. Like they could taste this like American lifestyle. And like I said, you know, everyone, everyone can do it, right? I'm, I'm giving them the opportunity to do what I did. And if, if you want it, like it, it's here, you just gotta work hard to, to get here. Everyone can talk about Filipino coffee, but 
no one is as proud as I will be. And that's how I, I have to be. Not egotistically, it's just I have to outwork myself. And I'm not looking at the, the competition for that. I'm not even looking at like the direction of coffee's going. I'm just going in, in my direction and just focusing focusing on that goal, right? Giving back to the Philippines, giving back to the Philippines. That's just it. I just keep, it's just the repetitious thing just telling myself. I, I love your point about passion and you're keeping your focus on what you're doing and not so much on your competition. That's I think that's pretty wise because sometimes we just try to mimic what we see other people doing uh, 100%, you know, and we're, we're driven by something that's not necessarily our vision and it it's not sustainable when you get to the really difficult parts of, of the business. It won't carry you through the same way that that personal passion will. And as you have proven over the years of doing this, you know, four years of uh, just learning, changing with what you learn, uh, it looks like, you know, four years from now, things might look really, really different, but that won't necessarily be too much of a change because things are different now. <laughs> oh, no, so, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess it's like the background that I've been in, like the adaptability to, to change, like on a on, on a dime, because we're out testing cars, right? And elements can affect the results. So the, the, the fact that, you know, I could test in hot weather, cold weather, and when things fail, we have to be able to kind of, you know, go through those things to get that data right we're paying mm -hmm. so much money to get that data we're like oh man we gotta we gotta do it we gotta stay up late at night or, or we gotta start the equipment at you know minus 30 and and you know sit in the car for four hours at you know uh 130f outside it, it's almost like i've been callousing um my mind for this already like whatever we've been talking about like I don't talk I don't like talking about the the, the p word like pandemic because I, I don't I didn't feel it as much as everyone did I did feel it like money wise but I didn't feel what everyone else was feeling like the panic you know I just I was like what are we doing you know like we should be so blessed that we're still here like community will will come out you know you know they'll they'll come out when when the time's right I don't want to use the word competitor because I don't look at people as competitors. I look at them as people that I would, that I'm striving to, to be, right? Like it's driving me to be better, not the other way around. I'm not looking at, at them in, in any bad way. I'm like, man, like I want to be as good as they are. It's like in, if you're building a motor and you're like, doing like every single little bit to get the extra horsepower is that that's what I'm trying to do is try to, you know, try to achieve what other people are doing. And even like chasing people like Alan Adler and, and the AeroPress, like I like people that are anomalies in the, in, in the system, like, uh, and yeah, Michael Savet's like, I, I didn't choose what I call the, the apple of roasting, right? Because everyone does drum roasters. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to be that guy. I want to be different, just just like how I am. I'm just different. That's why I like people like that. That that's the people that I admire. This has really been a great conversation, Ron. I I really appreciate you taking the time to share your story with us. Where can we find more information about what you're doing, Teofilo, and um, just help you in this process? Where can we find more info? You could find us on www.theofilocoffeecompany.com. And our Instagram is Theofilo Coffee Company. And Facebook is Theofilo Coffee. And then check us out on our uh, other pages at Theofilo, where we host our podcast and have our other pop ups come in there as well if they want to into the shop. And uh, our car side like automotive side, our cars meetup is a uh, UGK. Uh, please follow those. And we're going to continue this conversation a little bit uh, for some bonus interviews that people can find at the Ground Control website at uh, groundcontrol.coffee slash keys. So I'll be talking more with you here. But for now, um, I'll say again, really great to have this conversation with you. Uh, I really appreciate your passion and what you're doing and how you're doing things differently. It's really awesome. So thank you again. Thank you. I'm just grateful yeah, for this opportunity.
Well, one of the things that I take away from this conversation with Ron that I think is really admirable is his focus on feedback and his passion for opening up opportunities for others and doing more than just being a coffee company. Like he says, he wants to be a company that does things to kind of move things forward. As he's talking about the Filipino people, his shop in just the four years that it's been open has been a catalyst for a lot of great opportunities for his community and no doubt it's going to continue in that direction. Now, if you want to check out what they've got going on over at Teofilo Coffee, you can go to the website, teofilocoffeecompany.com. That's T-E-O-F-I-L-O coffeecompany.com. They've got that podcast. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram as well. I'll have all the links that Ron mentioned here in the show notes for this episode. And of course, don't forget that we have this bonus content. We continue talking with Ron about his advice to other entrepreneurs. We talk about how he manages his energy and time as a busy owner in the midst of all these projects and much more. So definitely go visit our friends over at groundcontrol.coffee slash keys to listen to that bonus episode. And I hope that this episode has helped you think differently about how you're pursuing things in your business. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me today on this special Thinking Differently episode. And I will see you here next week on Wednesday for episode number two in the Thinking Differently series brought to you by The Ground Control from Voga Coffee and Keys to the Shop.